Good morning, everybody. Ed Yardeni here. It's July 8th. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all had a great uh, July 4th. Um, Lots of uh, good barbecue and uh, enjoying uh, uh, America's uh, America's Independence Day. It's uh, something to celebrate for sure. Uh, Though, I guess, with all the partisanship out there, sometimes you're kind of wondering uh, what, what, uh, you know, (laughs) why we just can't get our act together. Uh, but at any rate, um, uh, again, hope you had a great July 4th. Uh, my wife and I went over to uh, uh, Scotland and uh, had a, a nice uh, holiday over there. Uh, we went and uh, saw the uh, hairy coos, they call them, hairy cows. Uh, I have a couple of pictures, maybe I'll post uh, me with a hairy cow. Just They look more, they, they, you can't tell whether it's a male or a female other than my looking, I guess. Uh, but uh, the hairy coos are... Um, uh, look look like bulls and uh, consistent with my uh, uh, bullish outlook for for the uh, economy and for the the stock market. Um, we haven't raised our S and P five hundred uh, forecast to fifty four hundred uh, for the end of the year, but instead we've been saying it's still a bull market. Um, it's uh, keeps uh, running ahead of our forecasts, and uh, maybe it'll get to uh, six thousand uh, well ahead of our schedule, which is the end of uh, next year. Uh, but uh, all in all, um, it looks as though um, the economy is doing relatively well. I know there's some controversy about that, and we can uh, get that uh, to that in, in a minute. Um, and there's also controversy about the bull market, um, that it's uh, narrowed. Uh, maybe it's become sort of the magnificent one, uh, with uh, NVIDIA being uh, the, the big leader, at least until recently. Uh, recently, it's been Tesla's been uh, the, the hot one of the magnificent uh, seven stocks. Uh, but um, all in all, the market's been doing well. Um, it's hot here in New York, and um, we've had uh, a hot um, market. Uh, it's I would characterize it as a um, slow motion uh, melt, melt up, if you will. Um, uh, every, every, for the past month and a half or so, as the economic indicators have been uh, somewhat disappointing, uh, you would think that that would uh, hold the market back, uh, but the market uh, is figuring that the foot, the Fed put is back, and uh, the idea being that uh, if um, the economy really does slow and there really is a risk of a recession out there, and we start to see the unemployment rate uh, moving still higher, uh, then the Fed will act quickly to uh, lower interest rates, and that will surely uh, avert a recession. Um, and so the stock market is not particularly worried about a, a, a recession. Um, there's still uh, those diehard hardlanders out there who thought there'd be a recession over the past couple of years. Now they think it's uh, we're in one now or we're about to fall into one. And a lot of them are basing it on um, the weakness in uh, labor market indicators. But our view is that the labor market isn't weakening, it's normalizing. Uh, a lot of the uh, slowdown in the labor market is simply related to where it was a year or two ago uh, when the labor market indicators were uh, remarkably strong, uh, having a lot to do with the post-pandemic demand for for labor. Um, Now, I think we're seeing that things are kind of cooled off and and in a normal kind of fashion, we're back to where we should be in terms of these labor market indicators, in terms of uh, the uh, the 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 overall outlook for the economy, in, in my humble opinion. <laughs> Sorry, just uh, one of the things that happened when uh, we came back from Scotland is uh, I got I managed to get a cold probably on the airplane. Um, I have to say Scotland is beautiful, just a little rainy, uh, <laughs> but uh, that that comes with the turf over there. But it is it is a nice part of the world. I did uh, post a picture of myself with Adam Smith, by the way. Um, I um, I'm I'm a big fan of Adam Smith, uh, but I'm also a critic. I I think he made a big mistake marketing capitalism as uh, having to do with selfishness. Uh, I don't think it has anything at all to do with selfishness. I think it has everything to do with insecurity. I think uh, entrepreneurial capitalists are insecure. They're always worrying that if they don't provide the very best goods and services to their uh, customers, they're going to go out of business. 
So the, from that perspective, um, the entrepreneurial capitalists are always thinking about what they need to do to satisfy their customers, make more of them uh, buy their goods and services. But that's uh, it's another book that I'm hoping to write at some point along the way here. And we've uh, had some conversations about this in the past. Uh, you may uh, find more of my thoughts on this in a book called um, In Praise of Profits. And uh, for uh, all of you who are subscribers to our service, users of our service, uh, In Praise of Profits is actually on the on the uh, accessible to you on the website. Uh, let me know if you can't find it and I'll help you find it. Anyways, back to the uh, the, the subject of our story here. Uh, let's go look at uh, at the charts that uh, we have in the, the morning uh, briefing. Hmm, thought I lost them there for a second there. Okay, so again, chart collection for morning briefing, July 8th. We're discussing <clears throat> the uh, bull market in stocks that, uh, you know, until fur further notice, uh, this is still very much a uh, bull market in stocks. Um, and as you can see, the uh, S&P 500 is, uh, <clears throat> has been, been crawling, not crawling, has been kind of going into this, again, soft. <clears throat> Let me take a little water here. The S and P five hundred has been in a um, slow motion uh, melt up, as you can see. Um, technically speaking, there are some issues here. Um, it has been fairly narrow. It's well above its uh, two hundred day moving average, so it seems to be technically overdue for a, a correction. Uh, but uh, this uh, bull market uh, really hasn't given anybody a chance to to, to get back in. Uh, so this is the bear market back here. And uh, there was one 10% correction uh, last year. Didn't last very long. And then it kind of reversed very quickly. And ever since then, the market really hasn't given much, much. Oh, this is not good. Maybe I'll uh, help myself to a throat lo the lozenge here. Well, so you'll, you'll be hearing me doing that. <clears throat> Don't go away. This is a real, real-time uh, show here. Okay, let's see if that helps a little bit. Um, so here we got the Nasdaq uh, going to a record high as well. <laughs> let's let's go over here and see what uh, the worries are. Well, one of the worries is that uh, the economic surprise index is uh, taking taking a dive here. Um, right now, I would characterize it more as a uh, soft patch. Uh, which is what we've uh, we've had soft patches in the past <laughs> that were reversed, <clears throat> um, but I don't think we're heading into a recession kind of situation. Um, this is the consumer uh, prices, as energy, food, and shelter, and you can see that um, uh, we've made a lot of progress in bringing inflation down. I think a lot of it <laughs> was pandemic related, and as you can see. The uh, PCED core and the CPI core, um, excluding shelter, excluding housing, uh, they're down to 2% already. So, you know, mission accomplished. We're already there just waiting for shelter inflation to come down. And we know that that's coming down. So the, the Fed uh, has clearly signaled that uh, they're somewhat pleased that uh, inflation has come down so rapidly. Uh, they're indicating that um, they're still looking at the overall inflation rate, uh, which is obviously not at 2% just yet, or more like 3%, uh, and saying that, um, I mean, they recognize this, but they, they still want to see shelter inflation continue to come down. And then they've indicated that they'd like to see inflation overall uh, hanging around 2% on a year-over-year -year basis for a few months. Uh, we're getting kind of different vibes from these Fed officials. Some seem to be uh, anxious to start lowering interest rates sooner because they're concerned about the Fed's mandate of keeping the unemployment rate down. It's all the way up to 4.1% now, which is, of course, is uh, still an extremely low um, unemployment rate. <laughs> but all in all, uh, as you can see, uh, inflation is not an issue for them. <laughs> I'm going to carry on here. I hope... You folks don't mind. All right. Uh, I don't feel as bad as I sound, quite honestly. 
but anyways, uh, so the markets are expecting that the Fed will continue to lower interest rates. Um, we've devised this little chart here that shows uh, the futures market and the six-month basis, the six-month futures relative to the current Fed funds rate, and then um, divide that by 25. How many 25 basis point cuts does the market anticipate? And right now, it anticipates 1.6 cuts. There is no such thing as 1.6 cuts. Uh, so they're expecting one to two uh, rate cuts over the next uh, six months, as you can see here. Uh, the uh, 12 month uh, comparable uh, analysis, 12 month futures up ahead here, uh, compared to the Fed funds rate, you can see that uh, they're looking uh, for a decline of uh, 4.3. So they're looking for four rate cuts over the next 12 months. Uh, where, where are we? Um, well, um, we're still not convinced that uh, a rate cut is necessary this year. Um, but uh, clearly the odds of it have, have increased uh, probably uh, for September. But so uh, we won't uh, quibble over one rate cut, uh, though, again, once uh, they get into that rate cutting mode, uh, they're going to be under pressure to do some more. And I, again, it's not clear that that's really necessary. Um, but, you know, we're having it both ways. We're telling you that uh, if we're wrong and the economy is much weaker than we think, then the Fed will respond and then the, the economy will be fine. Uh, this is a chart of the uh, S and P uh, of the federal funds rate uh, of the federal funds rate versus the um, uh, stock market um, cycle, bear markets basically. Uh, and what it does is just reminds you that uh, uh, this is a very unique situation we have here. The Fed has uh, raised interest rates. We haven't had a, a bear market. Um, and um, we did have a mini banking crisis. <laughs> but all in all, the stock market's still going higher, new record highs, notwithstanding the fact uh, that the Fed has tightened and is yet to, to ease. Um, in previous cycles, um, people have noted that uh, here, look, the Fed funds rate came down and we were in a bear market in stocks. Uh, look here, the Fed funds rate came down. <laughs> But where's where's Max? Maybe Max. No, I thought Max would take over for me. Uh, Eric's doing a panel, and I I understand that Eric did a really good job, so appreciate that from from Eric. Um. Anyway, so here's the Fed funds rate coming down. Fed funds rate coming down. We're in a bear market. Uh, back here we had uh, the Fed funds rate peak when financial crisis hit, and that made the bottom in the stock market. Where are we now? Well, history doesn't seem to be as useful in understanding where we are exactly now. Uh, but all in all, I think it shows that uh, if uh, the market keeps going up um, with, the, with the Fed funds rate where it is, it just shows that the economy is resilient and that the interest rates have normalized. If the economy gets much weaker and the Fed has to lower interest rates, so be it. And Stock market uh, isn't going to do one of these uh, on us, in, in my humble opinion. This is an interesting chart. You know, a lot of people have been complaining or worrying about the breadth of the market, that it's been narrowing, as I mentioned uh, before, and it was written about before. And you can see that uh, uh, the mega cap seven <laughs> stocks are up 118 uh, and change a percent since the beginning of the bull market. Let me just put on my other glasses. I'll be able to read better. Um, let's see. So the, the NASDAQ 100 is up 89%. The NASDAQ overall is up 76%. And the S&P 500 composite <laughs> is up 55%. So uh, clearly the leadership has been about with these uh, magnif uh, mega cap seven, the magnificent seven, so-called. Um and the composite um, has uh, done uh, quite well. But when you take out the mega cap seven, you still get a bull market. You still get the market up 36.4% since this uh, low point here. Uh, so the, this is just by way of saying that one of the issues with 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 the uh, breadth has uh, really been that uh, a handful of stocks have just so outperformed the rest of the market that uh, uh, breadth measures um, have suggested that it's narrowing 
But even if you take out the Magnificent Seven, you still get a bull market. That's the important thing to, to note is there are plenty of stocks that have done quite well. Uh, this is some uh, more technical uh, stuff. Uh, we're looking here at the uh, investor's intelligence uh, bull bear ratio. And you can see that the bull bear ratio is back up to 3.73%. It gets up to 4% or higher. Um, I think that would be the kind of a too many bulls, not enough bears. Um, and uh, that could set us up for some sort of technical correction. Uh, but there's a lot of money um, out there that's still kind of an FOMO mode, um, kind of missed, missed the uh, bull market and, um, you know, well, might fear getting out, fear of missing out some more if, if they don't get back in, particularly if the Fed starts lowering interest rates. Um, I mean, if the Fed starts lowering interest rates, I think the slow motion melt up may become a much faster mo motion uh, melt up, much, much fl faster moving. Um, this is another technical uh, chart uh, comparable to this one. It shows you that there's lots of bulls out there, very few bears. Um, this is an interesting story that's uh, out there, and that is uh, the unemployment rate starting to move higher. Um, maybe some people are saying we're actually in a recession because they see this thing moving a lot higher, but just with what it's done so far, that's a signal for some people <laughs> that we're in fact in a recession. Um, and as you can see that, uh, the, uh, during recessions, we always have a surge in the unemployment rate always. Um, and sometimes it doesn't peak until after the, uh, the recession in the current situation. Um, what we're trying to point out here is that one of the reasons that we've had recessions and soaring unemployment is because of credit crunches, uh, tight, caused by tight monetary policy, which then caused a financial crisis, which then caused a credit crunch. Well, that, you know, that really hasn't played out this, uh, so far. We've had a mini uh, credit, credit crisis, but it did not turn into a credit crunch. And uh, as a result, uh, we're not having a recession. And so I'm not convinced that this is a real problem. Uh, Eric and I have been doing some work on the household measure of employment. And the household measure of employment um, has got a lot of problems with it. And the household measure of employment is used to uh, <laughs> uh, calculate the unemployment rate. Um, well, how about initial unemployment claims? Shouldn't we worry about that? Yeah, we should. Uh, as you can see, this is initial claims. Uh, this is the four-week average. It's the highest it's been since back here. We've got uh, continuing claims uh, moving higher. Um, however, when we look at that data, uh, not seasonally adjusted, um, what we see is that things are pretty much playing out the way they did last year, which was not exactly a year when a, a recession unfolded, when the unemployment rate soared. And um, so uh, we think some of this may be... Uh, post-pandemic seasonal adjustment issues uh, having to do with the uh, claims. And we think that as we get through the end of the summer into the fall, we'll see these things coming back down. So that'll be a kind of a critically important development in our view of how the labor market's unfolding. Meanwhile, continuing claims, when you look at them this way, this is, you know, this continuing claim, oh my gosh, it's going up. Um, when you look at continuing claims on and comparing to things like uh, average duration of unemployment and things like that, uh, you'll, you'll see that they've actually been relatively uh, subdued here. Um, and that the other measures of uh, duration of unemployment um, and, and, and unemployment itself have remained relatively low. So this is that chart I was alluding to of uh, not seasonally adjusted uh, continuing and um, initial claims and have a look at it on your own uh, when you have time, and you'll see that it's kind of following the same pattern as it did uh, last year. And as we got into uh, the late summer, uh, you can see that, uh, and into the fall, this thing went back down again. Uh, so right now it's kind of tracking that. We'll see if it starts to diverge. How about this one? Um, that, uh, you know, the job, the, uh, job openings has come down Significantly, back here, there was, what, 12 uh, million job openings. Now there's 8 million job openings. That's still uh, what it was before the pandemic. So, hence uh, our conclusion that 
the job market isn't slowing, it's normalizing, it's back to normal. This was, this was all very abnormal and pandemic related. And that's confirmed by other measures of the jobs availability, like jobs plentiful and job uh, openings in the uh, small business uh, survey. So uh, we're not uh, we're not concerned here. Um, there's another slice and dice of the job openings uh, data. You can see that uh, the um, job uh, openings as measured in total has bounced back a little bit off of 8 million. On the other hand, excluding uh, government, we're down to uh, 7 million job openings, which is still kind of where we were before the pandemic. So actually the, the, at the high before the pandemic. So n nothing uh, to worry about, folks. Uh, just keep walk, m moving on. N nothing to see. Uh, in my, in our, our opinion, uh, this is uh, payroll employment. Payroll employment slowed down. Yes, it was revised down by a hundred thousand, and so uh, it was up like a hundred seventy-seven thousand uh, on average per month uh, during the uh, second quarter. But as you can see by looking at um, both uh, total uh, month over month change and total private month over month change. Uh, we're back to, you know, normal. Well, that's kind of our view is uh, normalization, not uh, not, not a significant uh, risk that it's slowing. Uh, by the way, just uh, for fun, um, we concocted another measure of uh, payrolls. Uh, if you take out, uh, if you take out, um, take, take high, uh, hires minus separations in the JOLTS report, uh, you can get, um, I mean, that's all you have to do. <laughs> and you get a uh, a series that uh, looks like the blue one, Jolts, uh, Payrolls, Monthly Change. And again, the footnotes here, total hires minus total separations. <clears throat> so that's the blue line. And we only have it through May. We, we don't have it through June yet. Uh, but May was very strong compared to payrolls, uh, the official payroll numbers, as was um this one, they, they they tend to be pretty closely correlated. And so I guess that uh, gives us a choice of which one you think is telling the truth or is closer to reality. And uh, all we can say is the payroll numbers uh, are fine and uh, maybe they're not, maybe things are actually better than that. Uh, of course, if you want to be pessimistic, you look at the household survey and that data looks terrible, looks like we're in a recession, uh, full-time employment's down and so on and so forth. Uh, Eric and I will be looking at that um, in in the morning briefing we're writing today for for tomorrow. So again, I uh, I hope uh, you were able to uh, glean something out of my uh, uh, throaty presentation here. Thought it sounded a little bit like what Willie Nelson with my uh, bass voice here, but anyways, I I made it through the. Uh, uh, the monologue, let's see, let's have a little discussion here of uh, the questions. Um, Ian, uh, other than taxes, what is your take on how to move towards a USG surplus, US government surplus, uh, or begin eating down 34 trillion of debt? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, debt just keeps growing. It's, uh, it hasn't been something that uh, has, has come down um, for a very long time. The last time that came down was uh, when Bill Clinton was uh, told that he had to maintain fiscal discipline or the bond mar market would come and bite him. And uh, we had a surplus actually in the late, uh, I guess somebody came to visit us here. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks, Max. Uh, nice to see you. Um, anyways, um, so um, the... Um, we had a surplus, uh, I guess, guessing in, in 2000 or so, um, but uh, that's not uh, any, that's not an issue anymore. The issue now is the deficits are getting bigger, debts are, are getting uh, more, um, and um, there's just no way to make that a pretty story. But uh, the day of reckoning just keeps getting postponed for one reason or another, and uh, we'll worry a lot about. We'll worry about that when the bond market's worried about it. The bond market was worried about it last uh, year, August, September, October, 
Uh, then Janet Yellen came in and said, well, if you don't like my bonds and notes, I'll issue bills. And that calmed the bond market down quite a bit. And of course, inflation's come down a lot. That's also calmed down the bond market. And the dollar remains strong, suggesting that foreigners still want the, the dollar and they have to invest it somewhere. So they put it in bonds. Corporate bonds have been very popular with foreigners. So that's where we are right now. And uh, yeah, the, the it's really pretty easy to narrow the deficit. All we have to do is raise taxes and lower outlays. Uh, that's uh, that's how easy it is. Uh, getting it done, of course, in Washington is impossible right now, but maybe one day we will have a bona fide debt crisis that uh, forces the politicians to do something uh, longer term about uh, the unsustainable path we're on with the deficit. Uh, Ian, again, any thoughts on the fact that half the new jobs are state government jobs and double the rate of private sector? Um, look, I think that speaks to the fact that there's a shortage of skilled workers. Um, I, I see it more that way. Um, you look at the National Federation of Independent Businesses, they're really depressed. Their optimism index is down. And then you ask, so well, wh why are they so depressed? Uh, is the economy that bad? And uh, it seems like one of their biggest problems is they can't find workers. They still have a lot of job openings. Uh, and I showed that in the chart uh, in, in the chart package that uh, is we just went through. There was a chart there on the NFIB job openings, and it remained very high. Um, so I think this uh, is what uh, stimulates uh, uh, robotics and AI and automation generally um, to uh, solve the problem of, of uh, labor shortages. The state uh, and local government jobs, I think some of that has to do with immigration, all these uh, illegal immigrants or newcomers, as some people would prefer to call them, uh, are here, and um, they're uh, they're a huge burden at the state and local uh, level. And state and local governments are scrambling to educate them, to house them, to provide social services to them. And and I think that's a a big uh, reason why state and local government uh, jobs are so strong. Um. Uh, so uh, let's see, high ed PPI seems to be rising lately. Do you think the CPI will catch up with PPI due to base effects and the CPI usually trails PPI? Um, I don't know. The PPI looks kind of like it hasn't been. And we look at it year over year percent change. Year over year percent change has been kind of 2.3% for a, a year um, hovering around that level. So we don't see a problem there. Meanwhile, the PPI good side continues to uh, face some deflation from imported prices, particularly from China. So I don't see that problem, quite honestly. And, um, you know, still looking for the CPI to continue to moderate. As a matter of fact, the um, core um, CPI inflation rate is supposed to, well, not the core, the headline is supposed to be like 0.07% <laughs> when it's uh, reported <clears throat> on Thursday. Uh, so we'll see what that comes out at. But uh uh, we continue to believe that uh, inflation uh, is heading down to two percent, and uh, and again, as excluding shelter, we're 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 there already. Chip, um, as per the job numbers bolstered by seven seventy thousand government hires, the ISM services first contraction to forty eight point eight in forty nine months, and general sentiment tilting towards the uh, somber side. That's 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 a good one. Uh, that's a SOM rule, I guess. Uh, thank, excuse the pun. Uh, Chip, I, oh, you're excused. Uh, look, um, uh, our view is we're in a uh, uh, soft patch. Um, so it's a soft patch. It's not the beginning of a recession. Uh, we think that the uh, labor market's doing fine, that uh, uh, consumers are spending, uh, particularly on services. Um, a lot of capital spending now is on software and research and development, which is data available quarterly, not weekly or monthly. And so there's a, a lot of these indicators that we're getting uh, are missing some of the areas of strength of the economy. Uh, but, um, you know, it is what it is. GDP uh, looks like it's coming in right now at one and a half percent. That's positive plus one and a half percent in the uh, second quarter. So it looks more like a soft patch. And this is the first half soft patch. We're, we've had that, uh, I guess, you know, previous years where things kind of started out slow and then picked up. Uh, Chip, again, uh, voice sounds more like Johnny Cash. 
Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, like uh, my favorite uh, country western singer, uh, Christian. Uh, are there certain levels for unemployment, continuing claims, unit labor cost growth, et cetera, that you would be worried about? Uh, uh, well, we do this weekly, and you know we write uh, daily, so uh, you'll you'll hear about it when we think it's adding up into uh, something concerning. Um, but uh, again, some uh, the, the Fed will probably be concerned, poor work concerned, and uh, we'll move to lower interest rates. And then you get a, a, a real quick melt up in the stock market, tremendous wealth effect, uh, which boosts consumer spending. So I, I just don't really know how you get a recession when the Fed um, is certainly biased towards cutting interest rates in the event it's uh, it's really necessary. Uh, uh, Louis, uh, do you expect the CPI, Louis, uh, do you expect the CPI to continue to decline on Thursday? Yes, I do. And um you know, like I said, uh, 0.07. Well, we use the uh, Cleveland uh, Fed's uh, now casting. It's pretty good. Um, so we don't get too cute about it. And it looks like it's going to be fine. Um, anonymous. The Citigroup Economic Surprise Index has soft sub-index weakening, much worse than the hard sub-index. What is your take on that? I guess what you mean by that is... Uh, the, the survey data versus the uh, the hard data. Uh, I don't know. We we look at the overall index. We didn't, you know. I think there's a, there's a tendency to get so far deep into the weeds uh, that um, I don't know. I mean, you lose sight of kind of the big picture. So we don't get that far that deep into the weeds on uh, the Citigroup um, su surprise index. We just point out that it's a volatile index. When it's weak, it's weak for a while, and then it kind of reverses. Gus, and are we looking at uh, strong margins over the past uh, over the past few years, uh, with major parts of costs, employment currently coming down? Do you have structurally higher operating margins moving forward? Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, one of the key parts of our roaring twenty twenty scenario is that companies are in fact increasing their profit margins, and that profit margins will be at a record high if not this year, the next year and the following year. So that is an important part of our story. And, um, you know, we think productivity uh, was very strong last year, will continue to be strong, and that'll help to keep unit labor costs down. Unit labor cost inflation is down to 0.9% year-over-year uh, percent change uh, through uh, the first quarter. And that's a really good indicator of the underlying inflation rate and certainly consistent with inflation on a CPI basis and deflator basis coming down to 2%. Uh, Gus recommends uh, chicken soup. Well, that's the next thing I'm going to do. Should have had some right here and and, and had some sips of it. Uh, is immigration the key savior for U.S. labor market? How, how would a Trump uh, win change that? Uh, immigration historically has uh, been a source of economic growth. Uh, that's as long as all the immigrants or most of them want to come in here for a better uh, lifestyle because they're willing to work hard. Um, if uh, immigrants come in because they want to take advantage of social welfare benefits, that's a whole different story. Uh, but I don't really know. Uh, I don't really have a great insight into uh, the, the wave of immigration that we're experiencing here. I have to believe a lot of them clearly want to work hard and, uh, and have a better lifestyle for themselves and their kids. Uh, and obviously, the, the transition for them and for the country can be uh, pretty difficult. But all in all, um, it immigration is a positive. Right now, it's a positive to the extent that state and local governments are hiring more teachers and uh, social welfare people and so on uh, to deal with this uh, this influx of uh, of immigrants. Um, I do worry about uh, terrorism uh, coming uh, over the border. Uh, the, no one is vetting. Uh, the uh, the immigrants that are coming in, and you got to believe that our adversaries see this as a uh, great opportunity here to uh, plant some of their people in our in our country. But uh, so um, we'll we'll see how this unfolds. There's positives and negatives to uh, what has been happening here. Trump may try to get them all out. Uh, that could be an interesting uh, uh, phenomenon. Um, I mean, they could, you know, a lot of them may fight back and say they don't want to leave. Um, it could be a messy situation. So um, I'm not going to um, 
forecast it, prejudge it. I'm going to see how it unfolds. Um, let's see. Um, Addy, uh, do you think the Fed might consider keeping interest rates higher for longer in anticipation of a Trump presidency? Yeah, actually, I am thinking that. Um, I mean, um, whether it's Trump or Biden, they're both talking about raising tariffs quite a bit, which is kind of inflationary. Uh, they're both big spenders, which is kind of inflationary. Um, and um, they're both inclined to deglobalize, uh, which is kind of inflationary. So uh, from the Fed's perspective, uh, do you really want to lower interest rates here if, if it's not clearly necessary, only to have to raise them next year? <clears throat> because fiscal and trade policies are inflationary. Um, well, lastly, do you think the weaker copper commodity price price is a soft patch or signaling something sinister? Actually, Eric and I are looking at the copper uh, chart right now and uh, writing that, uh, you know, copper's actually rebounded some, and so as oil prices have rebounded some, uh, suggesting that maybe the global economy is uh, showing some signs of strength. We use copper and oil as a sign of... Uh, uh, global economic activity so that's that's where we are and all that uh, there's a bunch more questions here but uh i like to keep this thing to um to um a half an hour we'll, we're over the mark and the dogs are here um got to take them out um i'm glad i made it through i'm sorry i didn't realize i was going to be that raspy or maybe would have taken gus's uh uh advice and had myself some chicken soup at any rate, uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll see you again. Uh, uh, well, I don't know if I, I'm, I may uh, may not be around next Monday. So if if I'm not around, Eric will be around. And from what I understand, the past two weeks, everybody's been happy with Eric's uh, fine performance. Thank you all very much. Mm -hmm.